is it that button over there? This one? Well, I think it's this one. Did I get it? Is it loading? There it is. Hey there, friends. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Whatever time it might be in your part of the world. Greetings, my excellent friend. It is so good to see you. You do hear me. Oh, my goodness. How you doing there, friends? My name is Jeff Fritz, and today... Today is March 10th, 2023. But even more than that, today is our .NET MAUI live workshop. We're going to spend the day today. I'm realizing I'm wearing purple on a purple background, and I'm okay. Note to Fritz. Um, today we're gonna we're going to teach you how to build your first mobile application with .NET MAUI. No audio. No audio? I'm seeing audio being broadcast. You hear me fine. Fantastic. All right, just double checking. Uh, no, we we should not be talking. No, we should not be wearing anything less when when talking about dot if i was in maui then it might make sense to to be more dressed for the occasion but i'm i'm here in fritz stately fritz studios in in philadelphia outside of philadelphia um and we're going to be talking about dot net maui today ah thank you friends i see a bunch all talking about the audio let's talk to the chat room that's the important part about today if you're watching the recording out there I will be reviewing all the messages down below, but there's a whole bunch of folks that are here watching live that are going to be asking questions, and we're going to be answering them as we go along here, as we're building things and, and tinkering and learning more about, about building mobile applications and native applications with .NET. And we're going to answer their questions. We'll bring them up, and you'll see them just below. You might have similar questions as we go along, and that's okay. And it, this is more of a discussion around those presentations. This isn't a piece of reference material that, that you can scrub through right to, well, how do I do this thing? We'll have videos like that later. This is hands-on teaching and instruction. So let me, let me catch up with the folks here on chat next to us here. Uh, my goodness, lots of folks here. Walter, thank you so much for the resub. 39 months with us. Sinclairinator, 44 months with us. All of our subscriptions, all of our cheers. We are donating to a Raspberry Pi. Well, we're assembling a Raspberry Pi classroom for the kids at St. Jude. Really, really cool effort, really cool project that we're putting together for them. We're buying a bunch of Raspberry Pi 400s, and we're going to be putting them putting them together with some educational material for the kids at St. Jude. All of our cheers, all of our subscriptions are heading to that project. Thank you so much. Good morning to both of you. D.D. Walsh, I mentioned, is here. Hello, hello. The Neo, good to see you. Napalm. Good morning. Onyx Tacular. Glad you found this. We're glad that you're here as well. Uh, and Anne Lazar is here. How you doing? Welcome. Will Airways. How's it going? Will Warm Peas. Hello to you. Mark Ringo. How's it going there? Frostbite. Good time zone to you. Yes. I, I know we have some folks dialing in from Australia, from New Zealand. I see some folks from Europe there. I think we're going to have pretty much all the continents covered here. It's going to be a fantastic day. Um, how much coffee is too much coffee? Asks the Neo. Well, when, when, when the, the shaking becomes a little bit more noticeable, I think that's, that's when you need to be aware. Um, <laughs> but when you have to go to the store to get more, yeah, that might be, um, you have to factor in gas. Yeah. Uh, Algorithmos. Hello there. Just saw the, the invite in your junk mail folder. Oh my goodness. Sorry to hear that it made it to junk mail, but we're glad that you've, you've joined us. We've posted um, all kinds of invites. Some of our friends have, have posted graciously to their social media accounts, to their LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, really trying to get the word out so everybody knows that we're doing this today. I want to make sure that before I get too much further, I want to thank some of the folks that have helped promote, helped sponsor today's event. Um, Mobilize.net, Global Application Partners. They are uh, a big sponsor helping coordinate and get the word out about today's event. I want to make sure 
that, that we thank the folks at Progress Software, Iron Software, uh, Sync Fusion, and Dev Express are all helping out, getting the word out today and, and letting you know about some of the, some of the great things that we're going to do. Um, I have a couple of, of um, videos that I'll play later today and, and we'll call out those sponsors and, and show you some of the cool stuff that they're doing and they have coming up that you can use with your .NET MAUI applications and use with your .NET applications as well so that they, they get a little bit of word in on, on what we're doing and what we're accomplishing here. So um, big thanks to those folks. I, we, we wouldn't be here today if it, if it wasn't for them. Um, there's a, a logo just below with links out to the GitHub repository where you can see more information from them, links through to their websites so you can learn about their products. I want to make sure that we give some we 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 give some some links and some love out to those folks. Victor, first timer, welcome, Victor. I hope you enjoy your time here today. We're, we 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 spend a lot of time in these conversations and and really thinking more about developer talk radio here on this channel. And I hope that's something that that folks enjoy as we're going through here. I'm going to get some music playing and we'll greet, greet some more of the the chat here. I'm going to be playing. The Stream Beats Lo-Fi playlist today. This is lo-fi music, kind of groovy music that's just going to be below my voice so that when I'm quiet, there's a little bit of music to fill in the gaps. And it's kind of groovy, kind of nice to have out there. We'll start with this song called Soda Stream. There you see it up top there. This is music that is DMCA free, royalty free. You can listen to it wherever you'd like. Twitch, Facebook, YouTube, doesn't matter. Really great music from a whole series of creators led by a gentleman named Harris Heller. Big thanks to those folks for putting together this music that we're going to listen to today. Um, let me see here. Let's continue going through. Oh my goodness. I'm seeing a couple more subscriptions come in and, and I do have the alerts turned off so that we can focus a little more on our content, but I will make sure that I pause and read back through. Welcome, Seb Bile, Onyxtacular, appreciate the follows. Frostbite with the resub for four months. Uh, anything for the kids, oh yeah. And I'm getting the final details from the Raspberry Pi Foundation about how we're gonna be able to tag and do a little bit more fundraising with them for this project, the, the computer classroom with the Raspberry Pi Foundation for the kids at St. Jude. Um, and Altrur, uh, Resistank, thank you so much for bringing your Prime subscription here. Ergenrod with the resub, 21 months with us. Mick Burr and Mark Ringo with the follows. Much appreciate that. Yeah, I've got the audio confirmation. <coughs> Excuse me. Lucky Peterson, um, yeah, you like the beard? It's, it's growing in. I need to trim it back again now. I gotta be careful I don't let it get too big. Otherwise, the kids start calling me Santa. That's a problem. That's a real problem. You know what I'm saying? That, uh, we don't want that. Um, hey there, Chris Jones. Good to see you. Harry and Wolf from Serbia. Welcome in. Junior Felix. Hello, hello. M. Pulowski, great to see you. Um, hello, uh, Zexdev in Novi Sad, Serbia. Hello, Saint. Welcome. Yes, everything's being recorded. This will be broken up, edited down into a series of videos that will appear in a playlist over on my um, over on my YouTube channel. All of the links, all of the content, and there's more content to be written, to be sure. Um, will it, It's made available. It's on a GitHub repository. It will all be linked and available if you're not able to stick around for the full day. And I understand that. Um, is that Jose Al Aliacuna? Welcome. Twitch2208. Good morning to you. You're from the country, Texas, says James10174. Um, is that Syed Imran? Uh, good morning to you. 44 months is a while. Yes. I'm the reason you started watching Twitch, Sinclair Nader. Thank you so much. Fun OpenGL coder, Jeff. It, Glad to have you here from the West Coast. Good morning, GI Working. Hello, hello. The Raspberry Pi 4 is so expensive, says the Neo. 
they tell me that the the supply chain issues are clearing up and that's going to be changing soon. So, um, hey, good morning, Juan Van. You got the notice from Iron Software. Never seen streams before. Looking forward to it, says Victor. Fantastic. Welcome. Glad to have you here. Uh, first timer for fun OpenGL coder, Jeff. Much appreciate you tuning in. Um, Howie, UKG is a first timer. Awesome. So today is Maui Day, Apricot. That's right. Yep. Um, Saint asks, and I'll I'll put that message up so that we can we can see some of the messages here as I get them queued up. Da, 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 da. I'm running. Um, <laughs> um, Texas is its own country now. Well, no. Uh, here we go. Uh, is the app we're making today going to stop daylight savings time from occurring this weekend? No, sorry. The app we're making today, we're going to build an RSS reader. This is something that's kind of, kind of disappeared from technology and the internet. Th this idea of we've got blogs and websites out there that are constantly publishing new content. And we've had this format available to us for a very long time, 20 plus years, called RSS, Really Simple Syndication. It's actually the backbone format that most podcasts use so they can notify notify your podcast players when, when there's new episodes. So what about blogs and news sites and the like? They have these RSS feeds hanging out there. They're just It's just an XML document that says, here's the, the latest content on the site with links to go get that information. And that's what we're going to build today is a, a little application that allows us to define a series of RSS feeds, put in here's various news feeds that I'd like to keep track of, be able to go and learn more about. Click one of those, open up and see here's the latest news, and then open those news feeds directly inside our application. So very a, a very simple application that I want to leave open-ended so that you, when you're inspired and you're done building this, look at it and say, I can make that better. I can customize this and add feature X, Y, and Z. And that's going to be kind of a jump off point for you to continue your learning once we've gotten that initial seed of here's a here's a cool little application that you can start with. Narnia Expert says, is there a GitHub repository link that we should start downloading for this workshop? Yes, and there should be a message that's coming in from, I don't see it yet, from Stream Elements. There's a timer that's going to be going off that will uh, have the link to the GitHub repository. You can also execute the today command, and it'll show you a link to that repository. Additionally, if you're watching the recording, and actually if you're watching on Twitch, just below, there's a link to the GitHub repository. On Twitch, it's on the About page. On YouTube, it's there in the description. Just below, there's a link to the GitHub repository with information about our sponsors, information about... Um, it, it's got the complete version of the application in there. It's got some of the docs. I only got through, I think, the first two... the, the first full two uh, modules of documentation. Um, and I... Didn't, I didn't finish writing all the middle versions of the application. We'll, we'll snap those versions as we're going here today. We'll take a snapshot and save it into the repository as we're going so that you can take a, take a peek as we're going along and fall back to things. So um, thank you for the question there, Narnia Expert. Appreciate you, you pointing out there. But there should be a message popping up every, every 10 minutes or so from from the chatbot on stream elements while we get things set up here uh yeah every 10 minutes it should be popping up there in chat um your dev team extended your lunch and learn to a full day for this chris funk thank you so much for that and's joining from the iron software pizza party and maui workshop and oh now now I'm jealous. It's morning here. I've I've got my coffee. I'm ready to go here. I've got a little bit of water. Uh, folks at Iron Software sent me a nice water bottle. Look at that. To uh so I'm hydrated through the day here. Got that going. We're going to have a great day together here today. 
Um, is it a, a problem if you drop a link to your mobile game in chat, says Noob Giraffe? I, I, I'm not a fan of that type of cross-posting here today. Um, yes, push notifications ha seem to have replaced RSS. However, some a lot of folks like to turn that off because it does become a little bit pushy. A little bit... Um, a little bit of a nuisance. Folks, there are folks that would prefer to pull, and when I'm interested, I'll go read the news. Push notifications. Um, first off, there's a cost that's associated with that. Uh, second, they're very bland. We can't customize and do fun things with them. And and for me as a content um, content creator, all of my interesting content and formatting is gone when when I use push notifications. So... How you doing there, uh, Port, uh, Portisgate in Argentina? Hello? James asks, what's the difference between a PWA and Maui? I like that PWA can be installed easily when visiting a web page. Let's go to James' question there. This is a good, a, a good jump in and get started question for this. Um, and, uh, oh darn it, it jumped. Um... Here we go. Let's start with this. What's the difference between a PWA and Maui? A PWA, for, for the acronym folks out there who aren't familiar with it, PWA is a progressive web application. It's basically um, a way for you to specify a manifest that says, here's all the content for this website to download and display in a browser on, on your desktop, your tablet, your mobile device, and there's some constraints that the browsers put on that. Now, you can submit that manifest and additional information to the app stores so that folks can, can discover that and install it. And the various browsers have ways to notify you that there is a progressive web app that you can install from, from that website. You get the benefits then of a website where as new content is created, it immediately appears inside that progressive web app. It becomes an icon on your desktop, on, on Windows, uh, Mac, Linux, whatever it might be, iOS, Android. And you effectively open the browser and all the browser Chrome, all the browser navigation elements are hidden while you're navigating around and interacting with that. Think of Wordle. A lot of folks went to the Wordle website and, and put a bookmark on their homepage. That's a progressive web app. It's one page with a whole bunch of JavaScript in there that's loading data from the server and displaying that. .NET MAUI is a full native application that is downloaded, installed, and runs uh, locally on the device. Whether it's Windows, Mac OS, Android, iOS, it's going to be installed and all the code that it's running, it's not interpreted like JavaScript. It's running natively. This also means that you can save and interact with content and the local devices, the local device capabilities on that operating system. You need to interact with the camera. You want to interact with the Maps app. You want to interact with the uh, location services. All of those technologies are available to you through a MAUI app. Now, some of them are available through a little bit of a bridge and a little bit of a little bit of uh, gaming the browser, right? We can certainly write some content to disk using local storage when we have a, a progressive web app, but you can actually write to disk. You have space allocated to you when you're building with .NET MAUI and native applications. So we're basically building an application that will give us world peace. No, it's not giving us. It might be world peace, but no, no, no. We're not getting quite there. <laughs> Um, there we go. Not that you want wind forms to die, says Juan Ven, but uh, what would have to happen for wind forms to be pulled from Visual Studio? It's not happening. Um, it's not happening. It, it, what would have to happen is uh, quite literally Windows stops supporting that application model. And honestly, the application model has been around for so long, and there's so many folks that use it, and there are millions, tens of millions of WinForms applications out there. It's not going anywhere. So, um, how you doing there, McNett's Boxite is here. 
Um, how you doing there, Ra0606? Uh, welcome. Um, wish you could follow along, says Bauxite. Is Maui is one of the big things you're interested in? Hopefully, you'll pick up some things by tinkering. Fantastic. Thindall, welcome in, a member of the Live Coder stream team. James uh, asks, how do I get workshop notifications? Would love to plan something like this or other .NET workshops with them. Um, so I, I run workshops like this um, two or three times a year. I, all I can say is, is follow the channel and those types of notifications when, when I schedule them. And also on social media, I do post notices about them and, and I, I'll be sending out emails and those types of things in the future. Uh, we were actually, we were just saying on yesterday's stream, I should start a mailing list. Maybe that's a thing to, to consider at some point here. Um, fun open GL coder. Jeff says, I've heard of Maui. Not sure what it is. Looking forward to the primer intro coming up. We're going to get to that in just a minute here. Um, Narnia expert says, you said there's a cost associated with push notifications. How does that work? Is this a cost charged by Apple or Android? Yes, it is. <laughs> it, it's it's a cost by Apple or Android and by whoever your service provider is. So you're going to have some sort of service provider that's managing those notifications. And for a, th there's a price per mil. But, so it's either per 10,000, per 100,000 messages that you send out. You have to pay a certain amount to, to have those sent to all of those devices. And Apple and Android as gatekeepers to that they, they charge a little bit for that, yes. Um, GI Working, thank you so much for six months of subscription in advance. Thank you, thank you for that. We'll be making another donation to our St. Jude class, uh, computer classroom at St. Jude with the folks from the Raspberry Pi Foundation. Uh, last week you received Maui stickers from the Microsoft Challenge, said Diago Kobe. Fantastic, congratulations. Um... Iron Software brought you to the channel. Love this workshop. Thank you, Supreme Creator. Appreciate that. Um, almost at the end of talking to, to the chat room here. Uh, James says, I think GitHub Code Spaces uses PWA. Um, you can install it as a PWA, yes. Um, quite frankly, GitHub Code Spaces uses Visual Studio Code, um, which is a JavaScript and browser-based application. When you run Visual Studio Code locally, it's an Electron application. You're using the Chrome browser with a special layer on top of it that becomes Visual Studio Code. So it makes perfect sense to optimize and make that available. When does the workshop begin? We're, we're talking to chat and folks like you, Martin, right now. And we're going to get into our first session talking about, uh, talking about getting started. What is .NET MAUI? How do I get things installed in just a minute or two here? The big brain idea, this RSS feeder that I'm about to build to notify of workshops. Not a bad idea either. Hey, Brent Law, first time user. Thank you so much for tuning in. Narni Expert asks, what are the minimum system requirements for iOS devices to run Maui applications? Could Maui apps still be supported on older iPhones or iPads? Ah, that's, that's an Apple question. How old is old enough? Um, I don't know how far back you can, you can go there on that. There is a supported platforms link there. Thank you so much, Sinclair Nader, for grabbing that. Um, iOS 11 is how far back they the .NET MAUI apps support. I'm going to make sure I include that link in, uh, in our content here. Thank you. That's a great link there, Sinclair Nader. Um, Piquesa, is it Piquesador? General guidelines when dealing with authentication. Um, when you're working with .NET MAUI, you can store locally, um, and quite frankly, that's just a little bit beyond what we're going to cover today in the workshop. All right, let's get in. Let's talk about, well, uh, all right, I'll answer this one here. Uh, can .NET MAUI run on a Raspberry Pi? No. .NET MAUI runs on Windows, Mac OS, iOS, and Android. So we've got it, we've got um, instructions for how to get ready and get installed on on Windows and Mac to build with .NET MAUI. Um, I'm going to focus on Windows today. 
I also have some instructions that I posted to my blog about how to get started when you're on um, when you're on Linux and building for Android uh, Android devices. There are grumblings of getting getting .NET MAUI working on Linux. It is something that the team is aware of. There is a community effort to do that. It's coming. It's coming. Yes, the workshop is being recorded. This will be available um, next week over on YouTube. So let's um, let me head over to to the code, and and I'll bring up and, and share that that page that Sinclair need to grab there. Let's head over to the other view as we get ready to write here. Hey there, friends. I'm down here. Um, much better. So. Um, supported platforms for .NET MAUI apps. There you see Android 5, that's API level 21 or higher. iOS 11 or higher. Mac OS 10.15 or higher. And Windows 10, 18.09 or higher. Um, or Windows 11. Most folks should, be, folks should be on the free upgrade to Windows 11 at this point. Um, only thing holding them back right now is the multitude of different UI frameworks on Linux. Yeah. That's that's a challenge to deal with, right? Um, but you can you can build with .NET MAUI on Linux and target Android. Can't tar you can't target Linux just yet. It's not it's not a supported framework. There are folks working on it in the community, um, but for the most part, what you're going to see is you're going to be building for Windows, Mac OS, Android, iOS at this point. Uh, you'd honestly try to blazer inside of Maui. Let's let, let's get to that in just a minute here, as as we spin things up. So um, I'm gonna keep some notes over here with some of these uh, links that we end up going to. So there we go. All right. Um, the workshop is available. It it is all online. All of the content is over here at uh in in my github under maui workshop you'll see links for it just below um i'm keeping an eye out for that it, there there the stream elements bot mentioned it just a little bit ago you can also run the today command in chat and it will give you that same github link to take you right here once again if you're watching on youtube the link to this is just below in the description so you can click and discover so um I introduce. I mentioned what RS is, what RSS is here, right up top. A couple places that I enjoy reading um, their websites, but there's also feeds for these websites that we're going to be able to stand up and get this content in a little bit slimmer format on our device, so that we can we can work with. So, for the DevTools blogs, there is a feed out here that we can open and it didn't open in my browser and that's okay. I'm going to open this with notepad and it's got this XML format and, and there's folks that believe XML, gosh, XML is a format from yesteryear. I get it. Um, very descriptive format and quite frankly, the angle brackets are the way that we run things on the internet. So there's a whole bunch of namespaces up front that describe different things you can interact with. Title of the, the channel and some other information here about where it came from, the language that's supported, how frequently it's updated, the image to kind of set off and denote what's in the content, so on and so forth. And then you actually see the articles here. Sometimes the full content of the article is here. Sometimes it isn't. So um, we're going to build an app that reads those and makes those available. Cold Hands asks, can I develop Android Maui and publish to the Play Store? Yes, you can. Yep. Um, so it, XML is a format from yesteryear, but it's, it's also <laughs> very durable, very reliable. So it's a, in my mind, it's always been a great format for folks to be able to work with. So there's, there's six, seven modules to the day that we're going to be going through here. Um, 
hold that thought, Sinclairinator, because I, I I got to the end of of building this and I went back and ah, darn it. Turns out there's a there's a library that that will handle RSS formatting. And I was like, because I, I generated the type myself and I'll show you what I did. Um oh geez, a Luthercrow. <laughs> SGML. So there are seven there are seven modules that we're going to be going through here today um, at various lengths of, of the event. Uh, we're going to go through and introduce .NET MAUI, talk about what it is, show you how to install it with Visual Studio so that you have all the tools you need to build and work with .NET MAUI. We're going to talk about layouts and data binding, how we can get data into and formatted on our screen. We'll talk a little bit about styles and how we can apply and format content on inside of our Maui application. Um, we're going to save data locally. It's one thing to to have a list of here's my preferred feeds, but do I really do I really need a web server or some other location to persist to that content? Save it locally on my device that here's my preferred content and we'll be able to work with it there. That, that's right, XAML is valid XML. We're going to be doing a bit of XAML today. We're going to talk about the .NET MAUI shell. This is a way for us to s dramatically simplify how we go through and work with our content. You, you know what? I, there was an, there's an MVVM entry that I should have had in here as well. Because we're going to talk about MVVM. Um, but the MAUI shell, that's absolutely the a shortcut way for us to build some of the common user interface capabilities that you expect in a mobile application and generate routing and navigation capabilities between those various components inside of our application. And that's going to lead into a navigation uh, segment where we're going to add a series of additional pages and provide navigation capabilities between those and a concept a lot of web developers are familiar with that we're going to bring back routing is, is going to get involved here and we're going to take a look and work through routing and moving, migrating between various components of our application, various pages. Last, we're going to talk about web view and, and hybrid applications. What's that mean? And how, when, when we want to present the content for, for these pages, for these news feeds, well, gosh, they're already formatted as a web page. Just put it on, on the screen like that. And there's a great tool that we can use inside of not just .NET MAUI, but inside of our native applications with .NET called the web view. We're going to light that up and show you how easy it is to start using and, and bringing in that content and presenting it on screen. Narnia, Narnia Expert says... Uh, it, native iPhone development is designed around model view controller. Is this how Maui applications are designed? No. Maui applications as a whole, it, as, an, as an entire framework, user interface framework, are designed and built uh, very much in a page type of structure. You have a XAML page and there is code that is behind that that manages that and you navigate between them. However, with the, uh, with the .NET Community Toolkit, I nearly called it Xamarin Community Toolkit, with, with the .NET Community Toolkit, because it does more than just .NET MAUI now, um, you can bring in an MVVM framework that will generate command pattern capabilities, events around the various properties and, and objects that you want to interact with, making things observable so that you get notifications as things change, you can react and interact with those. Makes things a heck of a lot easier and a repeatable pattern for you to build your applications. This also means that you can move some of that content to different places, put push stuff into a class library and make it a little bit more testable as well. All right, let's um, let's dive in. And oh, let me make sure I scroll down here. There's our sponsors. I'm on uh, dark view here. If we change this over to light view, you can see the content a little bit easier there. Uh, is that hiding up here? The so we can go to light view. 
Um, but you can see those a little bit better on the light view that is the default on GitHub. Um, I'm on dark mode here. So big thanks to those folks. Dev Express, Mobilize.net, uh, Gap now, uh, Iron Software, Sync Fusion, and Progress Telerik. All right. Um, first thing that I want to talk about is actually introducing and getting into what is .NET MAUI. How, how can we work with this? Yes, it is production ready. This is something that is shipped, fully supported. Folks are building applications with. There's updates and tweaks and tuning that are coming all the time because .NET MAUI is a layer that sits on top of the native tools and frameworks for iOS, Android, Windows, and Mac OS. So, and this is a, a image that we made from .NET 6, still works on top of .NET 7 and new versions of .NET if you're watching this some point in the future. .NET 6, .NET 7 are a unified version of .NET that has one base class library, unified set of types, command line support, um, and the ability to build your projects all at the command line. You don't even need Visual Studio if you don't want to. You can, you can build with Visual Studio Code. You can even build with your favorite text editor or other IDEs that are out there. MAUI lets you build for mobile, desktop, and hybrid using the native SDKs that are appropriate under the covers for WinUI, Mac Catalyst, iOS, and Android. So this means you get one project system that you can target, right? This is very, very powerful concept. One project system that you can target, build for, and you end up with four applications available that are built and available coming out of that huge stuff there that that is a big big deal so that's that's um that, that's important for for us as dotnet developers to have that productivity i i don't need to it, while i may know how to interact with and target windows Mac OS, iOS, Android, there's different SDKs, there's different toolkits, there's different uh, languages that I have to program in, whether it's Swift, Objective-C, uh, Kotlin, Java, gosh, uh, th that's a lot of different things to have to learn and manage, but with .NET MAUI, all of that is abstracted away, and you get the native compilation using those SDKs appropriate for those operating systems. Really cool stuff. Then, like I said, means you get to focus on the content, the business logic for your application, and you're not down in the weeds translating between all of these different technologies. Some questions coming in on chat. What's the difference between XML and XAML? So XML is the extensible markup language. It's the general format for general format reference for for angle bracket formatted documents, right? So HTML, SGML, XAML are implementations of XML. So is RSS, really simple syndication. XAML, X-A-M-L, is the extensible application markup language. I think I got that right. And it's a it's a language similar to HTML that's used to describe user interface layouts. That's it. So XAML inherits from XML, and Boxite pointing that out, thank you so much. And it, it has all of the features of XML, angle brackets, the closed tags, attributes on those tags, so that you can define and work with your layout. Um, we're going to continue to get this question throughout the day today, and, and I'm, I can't keep answering it every time because it, it comes up frequently again and again. There is no information on .NET Maui for Linux. It's, it, it's something that the community is working on, and folks are, um, folks are listening and trying to figure out how best to make it available. 
with all the different user interface frameworks that are available on Linux. Um, there's a question here, what happened to Comet? Um, quite frankly, the lead engineer who was spearheading the Comet experiment um, left. Other folks have picked it up. And there's other priorities to stabilize and, and build additional features into .NET MAUI before Comet is completed. So Comet's kind of on the shelf for right now because the, the folks that are assigned to be working on it, they've got some other responsibilities and features that they're, they're getting delivered first. It's not gone, but it's on the shelf for right now. Folks will be bringing that back. Will the workshop be available on YouTube? Yeah, this is another question we've gotten every five, ten minutes. Yes, this this workshop is being recorded and will be on YouTube later. Um, let me update the message there. Um, uh, is being recorded and will be on... Uh, And that will be youtube.com, C Sharp Fritz. There we go. Updated the message now so folks can see that. Just, we're getting some of these questions a lot. Yeah, I think there is a need for an FAQ command with some of those. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> because we're going to keep getting some of those questions a lot throughout the day. Um, so... There's differences when building for the mobile platforms versus building for Windows or Mac where we have a just-in-time compiler that we can use to um, it, to build and, and make the application available. So when we typically build, right, for, for Windows, for Linux, with other .NET applications, there's a just-in-time step that happens in there. You build and... There's code that's ready to go on top of a runtime on whatever target operating system. But we don't have that just-in-time compiler that we can run on iOS and Android. So what do we do? Behind the scenes, under the covers, this is what's being done for you. Your .NET libraries, your C-sharp code, your bindings are all being ahead of time compiled. They're being compiled to work all the way down with that native ARM processor binary to run on iOS. So we, we skip some of that just-in-time compilation and we end up with a native application that runs that'll be in this .app format. Similar thing happens on Android. On Android, your .NET libraries, your C-sharp code gets compiled, linked, and, and mashed together as an APK file that runs natively on your Android device. Very similar approach. So, um, so scrolling down here, there's a whole bunch of available features that, that are out there now that you can work with inside .NET MAUI, and .NET MAUI is the natural successor to Xamarin, and that's why you see this changes from Xamarin column here. So if you if you were a Xamarin developer, these things that we have should be very similar to some of the concepts that you've previously worked with, but they're now optimized for .NET 6, .NET 7, and MAUI, right? We've consolidated some of these things so that we end up closer to, it's not quite there yet, but we end up closer to a single XAML model that folks can use. So different capabilities that, that we have available for everybody. There's new capabilities that, that we've introduced. And there's some renames that have happened here. Color is now renamed to colors. Default values start at zero. There's a different namespace. More XAML compilation. App startup is different from... Xamarin, there's now lifecycle events, and we're part of .NET workloads, where Xamarin was something you had to install and run separately. Um, so we're going to get in, we're going to open the newsreader and, and start running that in Visual Studio. I want to talk about and make sure you know how to install this first. Let me pause for a second for another question or two coming out of chat. 
Uh, Cold Hands never wrote anything on XAML. What's the learning curve if one has HTML knowledge? It's not steep, but you need to break that that habit that we as web developers have of looking for uh, divs and spans and classes. Classes are out there. They're a little bit different, but they're out there. CSS style sheets, eh, they're now resources that we can reference and configure our applications using, and those styles get picked up and worked with. Boxite chiming in saying that it's pretty low. XAML does let you define a lot more behavior than HTML does. Yes, because there is no JavaScript. There is no script that's floating around with XAML. You're writing and interacting directly with a programming framework where HTML was really considered to be a document, uh, document formatting framework when it was initially built. That's right, Overbyte. Maui is the next evolution of Xamarin. Yep. So, um... It, the tooling inside Visual Studio um, definitely helps out, helps out with some of that complexity. Um, but a lot of what we're doing, if, if you are comfortable writing angle brackets, you can certainly work in Notepad, Visual Studio Code, Vim, wherever you'd like to, to write um, XAML and .NET code. Wolfpack is just lurking in. I have a spelling mistake on get my... Uh, streaming design. Get my what? Uh, streaming. Where do I have that? Um, where? Where do you? Where is that? Wolfpack. Get your custom stream custom streaming design? Is that what this was supposed to be? And that sounds like it's on my channel. Yeah, you know, on the Twitch panel. Uh, let's take a quick peek. Excuse me. Um, is that on that image down at the bottom? Oh my gosh, you're right. Um, I'm okay with turning that off. You're right, the panel's wrong. And that's from the designer, they made that, so... Um, all right. Uh, Thindal, hey, let's put up some of these so we can see it on screen and talk about this. Um, there we go. Thindal comments, uh, XAML gives you even more control over what things do and look like than HTML, CSS. It's also a little bit more complicated once you leave the paved path. It can give you more control, certainly more well thought out layouts than how we've evolved into layouts like like uh, Flex, the box model in CSS that we have in HTML. There's there's a half dozen or so layouts that are available to us in .NET MAUI with XAML um, that just know how to work inside the device. Agreed to a certain extent there, absolutely. Um, the instruction says open part one displaying data my news reader um, it sh it's actually source folder here I have the, the link wrong um, and yeah that screenshot see I, I was running through and, and putting this together <laughs> not all of it is completely tied by the time that you're watching this out there uh, on recording these will be updated and uh, we'll have up-to-date content out here um yeah that's the wrong folder it should you should be dropping into introduction source and my news reader solution so i will it's, we're going to be doing a bit of this through the day editing and updating some of these links as i'm going along here um say like that needs to be updated because i brought in some resources 
reusing some resources from another um, another version of this that's out there. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. It is... Where'd it go? Uh, this one. Displaying data. This is inside of... We are inside of uh, zero. Introduction. Uh, source. Um, yeah. And... Yeah. And I'll clean up some of those other images later. So... Um, now, before I even get into this, what I need to show you is there are pieces that you need to install and the Visual Studio installer in Windows will get you these pieces much easier than if you were to try and put this together yourself. So I'm clicking modify on my installation of Visual Studio. Yes, it's, it's light mode. Um... It's not a workshop if something doesn't go wrong somewhere. Well, stuff going wrong and also correcting things and making sure that for the next time we run this, we've got, we've got the right content out there. Um, to install and get this running right here, .NET Multiplatform UI Development under Desktop and Mobile Workloads. This is the way that we organize and make .NET content and features available. You don't need to install everything to work with .NET if you don't need everything. So I'm typically an ASP.NET person who's doing some Azure development as well. So I typically check these two. I'm not a Python person, so I don't install the Python workload. I'm not a C++ person, so I don't install these. But I, I will be doing some Windows development here. We're going to target Windows. So I turned on... Um, I turned on the MAUI workload here. I also turned on desktop development, so I get... You don't need this for today, but this also gives me WPF, Windows Forms, some other tools as well. So, um, it's possible to run, run in VS Code alone. Yes. Do you need to have any SDKs downloaded for it? Let me come back to that in just a second. When you check and turn on the .NET MAUI workload over here, there's a handful of things that it installs for you by default here. .NET MAUI, .NET Framework Development Tools, um, Build Development Tools for .NET. It puts down in Telecode, Live Unit Testing. These are optional things that are available for you as well. But I also went into the back in the individual components and I turned on... Right, These SDKs for Android, iOS, Mac Catalyst are here. But I also turn on the Android emulator here. Which is... That's funny that it's not checked because I have it installed. Turn that on so that you get it installed and you're, you'll be in good shape. So... And we'll see a little bit with Android here as well. Um, yes, there is a lot of space needed, and that's because the those SDKs for Android, for iOS, those entire SDKs need to be downloaded and made available, and they are not small to build and target those devices. Um, Megasware asks, do I need the UWP tools today? No. No, you do not. Um, which of these do we need to install? You you just need... I'll wait for that to pop up again. You just need the the first one over here. The, the .NET Multi-Platform App UI Development, or MAUI. M-A-U-I. Um, we can debug on an Android device directly as we were able to. Yes, you can. I don't have an Android device. We'll be using the emulator, but yes, you can. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't, I haven't gotten the iOS, uh, I haven't gotten the iOS debugging to work. My phones are a little goofy. Um, Narnia expert asks, is there an iOS emulator for Maui? No, 
Um, that is an, that is a limitation from Apple. You either need a, an Apple device, uh, an Apple uh, phone or tablet, or a Mac that you can connect to, and it will use the emulator from over there. So, do I have the Windows subsystem for Android installed? I do. I haven't been able to get it to reliably work with this. But that is a thing out there as well. So, um, Windows sub subsystem for Android comes with Windows 11. And, and I have it configured to be available to debug, but it is not available in my Visual Studio for some reason. Even though it's running. <laughs> so, that's a Windows thing, and I am not going to tackle and deal with that today. Now, there was a question about, hey, I can I do this at the command line? So, the other part of this is that when you do those installs, code is made available at the command line. Just like we're used to seeing, you can run the .NET command. But we have what we call workloads available here. And I ha you end up with a series of these that are installed. MAUI for Android, MAUI for Windows, Mac Catalyst, <clears throat> and then the native tools appropriate for those operating systems, the Mac Catalyst, Android, and iOS tools, so that it can build and, and target those. You have to manually start the client. I've done that as well. WSA is available in most markets, but not everywhere. That's a limitation having to deal with the collaboration with the Amazon store. Yes. So I, I if, if we had an audience that was just in, in the States, just in the U S I'd consider talking about that, but we don't. So I, don't want to go too far down that path. That is supposed to be an option that will be available that makes debugging, deploying, working with Android natively on Windows 11 a lot easier. We're not quite there yet for everybody, and the connections just don't quite, at least on my machine, aren't quite fully wired up there. Um... I'll grab that link and take a look at it later. I don't want to run too far off, um, too far off topic today. So, um, yeah, I've I've tried to to force it to run by by running um, running other applications that launch it. It's still having issues with that. How you doing there, Justin? Welcome. So. These, these workloads, if you are working at the command line, if you aren't installing with Visual Studio, you can install these with the workload install command and specify Maui Android, Maui Windows, so on and so forth, and it will install those for you. You can search and get a list of those available workloads. And it will show you, here's the various things that you can install and work with inside of uh, .NET MAUI and with the .NET command line. Um, you'll notice there's stuff here even for working with WebAssembly, not just, not just .NET MAUI, TVOS, Tizen. So .NET really wants to be available for you to build, to target, and deploy everywhere, and that's great. This is this is cool stuff that that means that you as a .NET developer can, can use your skills to deploy and work anywhere. So, hey there, Stony McWheels, and Zach Sanford is here. Hello, Zach. Welcome. Um, Audi Twitch says, uh, Maui seems more complex than Flutter. Is Flutter more mature than Maui? Flutter has Flutter is built on Dart. Flutter got the benefit of restarting. <laughs> Flutter got the benefit of building on top of what folks learned in in building .NET Maui because a number of a number of .NET engineers are overworking on the Flutter team. Um, 
but and, and former Microsoft developers, engineers are over there. Um, so they've effectively rebooted and broken all kinds of things so that they could develop and, and make Flutter. And some of the things that you can do with Flutter are a little bit further along because there is no backwards compatibility concerns. So, um, so I wouldn't say that it's th that Maui's more complex. Maui has a more more evolved ecosystem, and because of that ecosystem, there are abstractions in various places where you can decide how and when to bring in various capabilities, various interactions that are already there and available for you from the rest of the .NET ecosystem. So you can just light those things up and bring them in that were already built and folks were using for WinForms, WPF, other libraries that may have been used for console applications. You can just bring them in and include them in your Maui application at no pain to you. So... Cold Hands asks, as .NET MAUI builds Windows apps too, along with iOS and Android, does it inherit WPF and WIM forms as they build Windows desktop apps also? No. The, the part of .NET MAUI that builds, builds, the part of .NET MAUI that builds Windows applications is an evolution of UWP, which became WinUI 3. So the next evolution, right, it's not an evolution, but the abstraction on top of what was way back in the day, right, universal Windows platform for, for Windows 8, Windows 8.1, Windows Phone, the evolution of that became WinUI 3. MAUI builds and targets that. So you see tvOS but not Android TV. Um, I believe... I believe you can do it with the Android. I haven't tried that yet. So, Maui's Nuggets. Uh, new, new J's, but something like that, yes. Um, cool. So, install these and it will get you there. Ah, uh, yeah, Windows Phone was great. The Metro user interface was fantastic as well. Um, I do have instructions available and I, I will link these over on my blog. If you want to build and work on Linux, targeting Android, that's the only supported platform you can target from Android. Um, and uh, da, 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 da. It's, it's going to be further back. Um, go do that search. Come on. There we go. I built an Android app on my Linux machine using .NET 7 and MAUI. There we go. So, uh, even a little bit of video there with instructions of how to install the, the Google Android emulator, um, the tools that you need to install, how to build. You, you have a slightly different command line to build and target and work completely at the command line if, if that's what you'd like to do. It's not impossible to work at the command line. It's a little bit trickier where Visual Studio 2022, Visual Studio for Mac, provide and do these things for you. I will share that link for you. Um, and I will add that into the list of um, the list of links that I'm going to add into the README and content here for the workshop. Um, So I will, I'm keeping these notes just off screen. There we go. Cool. Um, catching up here. Uh, Don Stefan asks, is it easy, is deploying easy with Maui for each platform? Yep. When you .NET publish, you get those appropriate apps for each platform and you can send them off to each of the stores. Uh, Robin Cleveland is using .NET MAUI with, with Razor pages, not finding much out there when running into issues. Inadvisable to use Razor. No, no. We're going to get into this in just a minute. Um, using it with Blazor, which is will give you that Razor look and feel, absolutely works great. 
and and I'll show you how we do that in just a minute here. Um, da, da, da. Little Dan says, I thought WinUI was the official library of components. Can't you use WinUI in WinForms as well? Yes. There is a bit of crossover between those as well. Yes. WinUI is the library, is the framework that they want you to use to build with for Windows 10, Windows 11. The, the evolution of UWP. Um... Zach asks, what's the difference between Maui Desktop and Maui Windows? Um, it, this is an abstraction, just like Maui Mobile. This is an abstraction over uh, Mac Catalyst and Windows. So this way, you get to target a little bit of both, I believe. I haven't used it. I've used the OS-specific targets there. Robin is using Blazor and Mudblazor. Cool. All right. So that's how you get. That's how you how you get Maui installed. How you run it on your your machine as a developer. Folks that you're handing this off to, they don't need to touch any of this stuff. This is these are developer concerns that that we have and we use now. Once you have the tools locally, there's instructions there in, in the workshop to, um, uh, I should have turned that off. Um, there's instructions in the workshop about how to, how to open and take a look at the first app here. I'm, I want to back up even simpler here. And let's, let's just say file new .NET MAUI application and take a look at what's created for us. So, Let's head back over to Visual Studio here, and I'm going to go File New Project, and I'm going to create a .NET MAUI application. We're going to take a peek at what a .NET MAUI Blazor app is here as well. So, sure, I'll call it MAUI App 3. I, I, when, when this number gets to triple digits, that's how I know it's time to, to clear out, clean out my dev folder. There's junk in there we need to get rid of. Um, so I'll choose next and you get to choose between two different versions of .NET. .NET 6 is our long-term support. That's a, a long-term supported version of the framework that will be supported since it was released last year. It'll be supported through 2025. That'll be available. .NET 7 is the version that was released in just this past November. Um, and that will be supported going into 2024. .NET 8 is the new version that's going to be coming out later this year. That will be a long-term support version as well. But I want to make sure we get all the latest fixes, updates, and capabilities here. So I'm going to run the .NET 7 version of this. So. All right. We're starting to see a little bit of, little bit of code right off the bat. There is an overview page that's open for us that talks a little bit about what .NET MAUI is and gives us options to jump in and learn more about, about the product, learn more, get even get some beginner videos, learn about controls, graphics, XAML. Um, folks were asking about XAML earlier, right? So if we click into that, there's a nice introduction here about how to get started with XAML. There's some fundamental information about how to build and lay out this, the content, information about syntax, really good material if you need to take that deep dive on, well, what is this? How, how do I write this markup? Um, for me, as a, as a web developer, a lot of the syntax has been natural, has been pretty, pretty similar to what I'm used to. And what I'm able to, to jump off on and, and lean into my tools and discover those capabilities, those things that I want to do. And I'm looking for a, a font formatting feature. Ah, and IntelliSense helps me out with that. So, um, all right. So those resources are out there for you. Now, 
let's take a look at the Solution Explorer. And by default, the content of the application is kind of sparse up here. You know what I'm saying? There's there's this Platforms folder, Resources, App XAML, App Shell XAML, Main Page, and then a MAUI program. And when I run this, it's a very simple little application that it gives us with some graphics, some labels. You can see there's an image and some labels here, and then a button. Let's see what this looks like when I run the application. And it opens really, really wide because I have a widescreen monitor here. But I get a little title bar at the top that's in lovely .NET Purple, the .NET bot, a couple labels and a button. And when I click the button, it counts the number of times that I've clicked the button. So we've got this little bit of layout here that defines exactly that content we're seeing on screen, right? We have an image that points to something called .NET Bot PNG. There's our .NET Bot. Let me shrink this down a little bit and scoot it over to the side here. It's going to... Yeah, yeah. I'll scoot that over. There we go. Um, and there's a description here. If... Uh, folks who, who might have accessibility issues might not be able to see. They can have a screen reader read out what that is. There's my Hello World label just below that. And then a label below that, Welcome to .NET Multi-Platform App UI. So two labels, two blocks of text. And I see there's font sizes declared on those. And a button. And that's very clearly defined here. The button has a name, counter BTN. Okay, and uh, there's a hint, count the number of times. So once again, if a screen reader is running, it shows me and gives me a little bit of information about that. And uh, there's a clicked event handler here that that we can see and, and uh, hopefully do something with. Some information about how it's centered horizontally. So we will take a look and dive into that just a little bit. Um, there we go. I was a little bit a little bit hot there getting some reflections coming off the camera. Are we going to cover win UI3? No, we are not going to cover win UI3. We're going to stay at, at a higher level working on .NET Maui here. So clearly something's happening when I click the button here. And, and we do have that information that there's a clicked thing here and on counter clicked. I'll press F12 on that. And we see this event handler that's defined over here. Standard C sharp, a little event handler that knows that called on counter clicked. It's going to receive something that's sending that event. I don't know what it is. It's an object and some event arguments. And we're just going to increment a count field and replace the content of that button. And we can reference that button because it has that name, counter BTN. We specified that name right there with this X name property. So that comes out of our class object defined up here. So the class inside the markup specifies well, here's the C-sharp class that backs this. And there it is, main page. And this is saying, well, name this counter button, and we're going to put it inside X, inside that main page. So this is a partial class. There's another part to this lingering out there that has a counter button. If I press F12 on counter button, it takes me into this scary looking bit of code. Mm. This is code that's being generated by .NET MAUI, by the compiler for you. It generates this code that specifies the layout, specifies some of the components that are inside the code, inside that XAML file, so that we as typical rank and file developers don't have to look at and deal with how do I position these things and and the properties and all that. This is effectively the output, the translation of some of the content that's in the XAML file. All right. 
So I have this hanging out here, but there's there's other things too out here. I can look in these resources and look at this. I've got icon, fonts, images, raw, splash, and styles. What's all this? These are those static resources that you need in your application to make it feel complete and, and look good out there, right? Folks want a splash screen that appears when you present your content. So we can put an SVG in here that has something that'll appear for that, um, for that splash screen. And if I want to open that, um, no, you know what? Let's open this folder. And I can open that SVG directly using the big Microsoft Edge. And you can't see it because it's white. Well, now I feel shame. Um, this basically is the .NET logo is what you is what's coming up inside there. But it's it's got a background that goes with it that's defined down here in the styles. So we have this resource library over here, resource dictionary that specifies various colors and capabilities and formats for our content. Those are static resources. They're not being they're not being changed that along the way here. Very similar to the dub dub root folder. Yes. So colors, and you can see here's some of the colors that are defined with names for these colors so we can reference and use them in other parts of our application. All right. So. Um, can you use animated SVGs in your splash screen? I haven't tried it. <clears throat> I haven't tried it. I don't know. I'm going to take that as a... as a note to update the workshop with. Um, and I'll put the the results in, in the readme for uh, one of the segments here. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Um, I believe... I believe you can. I haven't heard anything that says you can't, but I haven't tried it, so I don't have any um, expertise on that. All right. Um, now, those resources are being referenced, and we'll get into what more of these are. They're being referenced and defined up here inside our project file. So for web developers, you have... You have a package JSON file out there when you're building with Node that has all the files, all the libraries that you're referencing. It has some scripts in there so that your application knows here's all the references to pull together to, to use and work with your application. Same thing here. These are libraries. These are definitions for the various supported operating systems. Um, and defining up top here that we are using .NET MAUI. We are in single project mode. There was a previous version where things were split up a little bit, but you want single project at this point. Implicit usings is a C-sharp feature. Identifiers for the application when we do ship it off to the various stores. But those resources, we mentioned the splash screen down here. There's the splash screen. It's being referenced so that our application, when it builds, knows how to grab that, recognize that as a splash screen object, apply the appropriate coloring to go with it as the background, and the size that it will center for that splash screen to output and place inside of the application. This is important because when we think about Android apps, they actually take these images and resize them appropriately and compile them for the appropriate size for the various devices that the APK targets and is getting installed on. So there's a little bit of massaging of your content that happens by the, by the Android storefronts so it can be made available for the various devices. Um, somebody up there, uh, where was it? 
Um, Mark, Mark Ringo says, I got an error compiling Maui saying your local machine is not in developer mode. Yes, all of the things that we need to be doing, that we're going to be doing here, you do need to go into your Windows configuration, configuration settings. I believe it's also in the Mac settings and turn on developer mode to give you a little bit more access to be able to compile and run applications that aren't signed, that, that are being built and worked on here locally. Um, uh, I will take another note about that to add into the documents so that we have additional documentation. Thank you. Um, yep. Converts the SVGs to PNG files. You can use PNG files in there as well if you'd like. So, um, all right. If this gets converted over to a PNG, um, why not use a PNG instead of an SVG? Because there are many different size devices that this is going to be made available for, and it's going to scale and place those appropriately for those different screens. Can we override those standard styles for views? I would want to make all my buttons in my application looking the same. Uh, yes, you absolutely can. And that's that's actually, right, that's part of what's going on here is there are default settings for date picker, checkbox, buttons, so that it specifies we'd like it to have round buttons and here's different states that we have. When it's disabled, we're going to apply a light font color to it and we'll change the background color to gray so that the button looks disabled so if you want to change the style of buttons by default right now here look my background is going to have um the primary color well what's the primary color look up here and you see it's this 512 bravo dog 4 color which is a light purple so you can change that and change the whole theme of your application. We'll do a little bit of that later today when we talk about styles. Android emulator is booting very slow. Is this normal? Yes, it is. Um, I'm running on, an, uh, on a Ryzen 9 5900. I have 24 processors and 64 gig of RAM, and it runs slow. Yes, that's... That's the Android emulator. Mm -hmm. So, yes, PNG will get more pixelated when scaling between different devices. So, SVG gives you that assured and and fixed look to how things are because you're specifying your your images using vectors instead of rasterized as pixels. So, um. So I mentioned uh, splash screen. There's application icon, once again, as an SVG, because icons are different sizes on different devices. So it's an SVG, and it will be rendered and deployed appropriately on those various devices. Popping the Solution Explorer open again, there you see the icons, and there's another one there. Um, is that? Yeah, it's going to open. I thought there was a way. No, no, no. I thought there was a way to open it so we can view it here. Right? Do we? No. Um, so, those are out there. You can open them in, in other editors and be able to see that. Yeah, Android emulator has not changed at all. And quite frankly, most folks develop with real devices. And yeah, so um, retired your yoga i7 from 17 years ago, picked up Allegiant 7 because of how slow. Yeah, I, I get it. Android emulator seems to be faster on in Intel CPUs. I've heard that as well, but uh, I have no proof. So Icons you'll see in the app icon folder. And this is just keeping things organized. 
Um, splash screen, you can place images inside the image folder here. So there's a default here, a, a splat include that says, go and include all the images that are inside the image folder. But particularly, we want to make sure that we give a little bit extra information about the .NET bot that we used on that main page and specify the base size for it. This way we can kind of be sure that that SVG is the right size for what we want to deploy. So you don't have to do this. If there's SVGs uh, or PNGs you want to include, you can leave, leave them off, but you want to get them rendered the same size every time, specify them and add the size here. Fonts, nobody wants to have the same fonts throughout their application. Everybody, or it, you want to have different fonts from the other folks out there. You can copy in TTF files, OTF files, register them here as a custom font, and this will by default include everything in the fonts folder, um, and you'll be able to use those fonts. We have to register them at one more place. I'll show you that in a minute when we get to the program file. And there's also raw assets that you can include, like a text file. I want to include this so that I can display it on an about page or something. I don't know. There's raw things that, that don't fit into images or other things, text files, JSON documents, whatever it might be. But you stick those in this raw folder and they get copied in to your application. So, and those are going to be named and copied in here, just like um, the, the directory they're in, the file name and the extension, you'll be able to find them if you need to pull them out and work with them using resources in .NET. And then there's a reference to the debugger, so we can use debugging inside of this. Um, Hyper-V does speed up the Android emulator. Uh, it's, it's still a little bit of a dog. And it, as, as Jeremy was pointing out earlier, Maui subsystem for Android is supposed to make that even faster. Still haven't gotten there. What would you need to do in order to test your Maui app on an iPhone or iPad device? Uh, plug in, plug it into your, your machine. Um, and when you're debugging, you will be able to attach directly to a device, a remote device, or a simulator running on some other system. And Visual Studio will walk you through connecting and configuring and working with those. Do I have a good PNG SVG service to recommend? I do not at this point. Xamarin had a feature at some point to run an app with a QR code. Um, there was a developer tool that would let you do that. Um, I don't think that's still available. Can that be used for some settings? Can what be used for the, the raw assets? Um, I believe so, yes. Now, keep in mind, anything you put inside your Maui application, folks can decompile and see that content. So if you put API keys inside your Maui application so that you can access a microservice or something, folks can decompile and see that. Folks can, can also, right, run a sniffer on the network and pick that up. My point is the content inside your Maui application is not and should not be considered secure. Okay, it's compiled. It's it's stuffed in there. Folks can get it if they want it. All right, and that should be the way you think about any application that folks install on on their systems that are outside of your control. People can get to it and decompile and look at it. You don't need an Apple computer when using a plugged-in device. I believe it it's supposed to work in Windows. I haven't gotten it working myself. Um, like I said, I'm, I've got to redo these phones. I've got an issue there. And it's only for debugging. It does have some restrictions. You, if any further than debugging, and you need to pay the Apple developer fees that you will have to pay if you're going to publish into the Apple App Store. So, 
Um, data binding is the next module we're going to be talking about. We're going to get there. And, and we're going to start data binding information about that. Dotfuscator does help. You're right, this is Sparta, but it it folks can still reverse engineer that. So, um, but yes, Asabla and working with working natively with devices is a much better experience. I don't have an Android device. I'm not an Android person. I am Team Cupertino. Is that a thing, Team Cupertino, not Team Apple? I'm going to assume it is. Um, so, it, I, I do have fruit-flavored devices. So, um, Exactly, Elliot. You can plug your phone into the PC. You're going to get a much better experience with the Mac. Much better experience. Um, but it, it can be done. So, and there, there's things being done. It, it, there, there are teams that are working to try and make that a better experience for developers. It's, it's strictly an Apple thing. It, this is not something where, oh, Microsoft didn't build. No, it's, th these are the constraints that Apple has on their development ecosystem. Apple, Raspberry, and Lemon. Well, Apple devices, Raspberry Pis, what's the Lemon? I like where you're thinking there, Quantum Beta. Uh, I don't remember Apricot PCs, no. Then you need Xcode installed, yes. Xcode, and then there's emulators that pop up, yes. So. Thank you to all the folks that have been joining and following today. Much appreciate all of those folks that have been clicking the button to follow. We really appreciate you joining us. Thank you so much. Um, PNG to SVG is difficult. Thank you, Pac-Man Jr. chiming in on that. Yeah. Um, it's, it's not drop-dead simple, but you can get there. There are tools available online that'll do it quickly for you. Um, how you doing there, Sector2350? Good to see you. All right. So... That's a .NET MAUI application, and it's got some, some configuration items for resources. How does this thing actually start? Well, it starts as a program. So we have MAUI Program CS. For those of you that are web developers, this is going to look familiar. Purposefully look familiar, because we want this, we, we want to have a consistent experience when you're building .NET apps. We're going to create a MAUI app. And we have a builder out there that has a bunch of sensible defaults already configured for you. We're going to take that builder and we're going to say, build a MAUI app. And in fact, we're going to use this app class over here, sitting here in app XAML. And that's where we're going to start. We have some fonts to configure. Here's the names of those fonts that are in that fonts folder. Open Sans regular TTF, Open Sans semi bold TTF, and then a name to go with it to make it a little bit shorthand to go find it. I appreciate that the folks who built the templates here made these effectively the same as what's over here. Very cool. I'm a fan of abstracting away these names, right? I would rather name these something like that so that in my code I'm referencing the styles the fonts regular and semi bold and if I decide you know what I don't want to use open sans I want to use uh, so, uh, I want to use uh, um, Tahoma I can do that I can drop that in and use that and none of my other code needs to change because I changed it from Open Sans to Tahoma. I've I've got a little abstraction over that naming, and that's me as a developer, as an object-oriented developer, wanting to swap out designs, fonts, those types of things later. Add debugging capabilities and re return the output of the builder. 
that's makes makes sense when you look at this and we'll add in new capabilities here to um to enhance the application we'll add services we'll add in other fonts we'll light up other features inside of here because there's also a service locator that comes with this that we can work with and we can work with loading and identifying those objects elsewhere in our code without having to explicitly create and pass them along. So, hey there, SinStalker. Welcome. Um, so, yeah, this is effectively the program CS file, but in MAUI format. So, um, and honestly, I, I would rather... I would rather be like that. Doesn't know how to do that. But I'd rather I'd rather the top level statements. You know what I mean? Um Are there other resources to learn Maui other than Microsoft Learning? You want to go deeper. Um if there's other websites out there, Plural Site, Wintelect now, Skillshare has content, YouTube has a lot of content. There's lots of other places that you can go for it. Um, there are some... It, the Microsoft videos don't go as deep on the advanced topics, but the material is out there. Ocular Malice uh, comments that it looks like a .NET Core web app. Is there a migration from Xamarin apps to Maui, or is it a total rewrite? There is a migration available using the .NET Upgrade Assistant. And there you go. Xamarin Forms to .NET MAUI is available out there for you to migrate. So there, I'll share that link for the Upgrade Assistant. And I will include that in my notes for the, uh, for the workshop. Thank you. So... Um, and the folks working on the Upgrade Assistant have lots of features they're building and iterating on to make it easier to get to the latest versions of .NET frameworks, UI frameworks, whether it's Blazor, Razor Pages, WinForms, WPF, and of course Xamarin. Check out all the content and how you can use the tool. Works great at the command line there. Check it out um, at the link I just shared in chat. And for those of you watching, I'll make sure that that link is added down below and it will be in the uh, it'll be in the repository, the GitHub repository docs as well. Um, would you be able to use a font site to bring in fonts with Maui? Yes. So I've I've grabbed. I'm a big fan of Font Awesome. Font Awesome version four, I believe, makes OTF files available, right? Um, so you can download and use those in your applications. I've, I've been quite successful at bringing font awesome in adding it into a .NET MAUI application and then being able to use the, the glyphs, right? The, the icons from the font awesome font inside of .NET MAUI. Very, very cool to be able to use that. Um, what is it? So I was over there. And I, I started using Add Singleton here, right? There's, um, not only is there Add Singleton, right? This is, these are service locator things that we'll, we'll talk about. There's also Add Transient. These are different scopes of objects that we're going to register with the service locator. When something is registered as transient, that says every time I request one of these objects, whatever type it is we register, and we'll see this a little bit later when we start working with the service locator, create a new one. It's transient. Create a new one, and when I'm done working with it, you dispose of it. You clean up that object. A singleton is just the reverse. 
there's only one application, one instance of whatever type we register with the singleton uh, syntax here. There's only one of them in the entire application. So you might request access to, to a service object that's going to allow you, in our case, to go and load RSS content. You'll only get that same one every time it's requested. And that might be desirable because you're managing things in memory. You're pushing things around and it lives in one space in memory. After getting used to top level statements, it's kind of hard to go back. Agreed. Agreed. James Montemagno has a fantastic YouTube channel with all kinds of stuff um, working with .NET MAUI. Does Microsoft's identity work with MAUI? It does. And, and it's something that we're working on improving documentation processes and make it easier for folks to use with .NET MAUI. Um, in my opinion, how far off is .NET MAUI development for real? Not in early stages. Um, it's it's real. Folks are building production apps all the time with it. It's actively happening. The there are the, there are edge cases that folks need need help with. There are features of the underlying operating systems and SDKs that those vendors are moving and changing that MAUI needs to be updated to work with. This is a challenge that we see with every new version of iOS, Android, and Windows, Mac OS as well, that as those update, MAUI needs to get an update to be able to support new version X, iOS version 27, Android version 52. Those are version numbers that don't exist at the time of this recording. But when that happens, Somebody's got to build a feature into .NET MAUI so that it knows how to translate and work with that version of the SDK. So it's it's early in the game for .NET MAUI. Things are adapting and working, and having the cohesive delivery with the rest of .NET means there is a level up on quality that we're getting over what was in Xamarin, and it's getting better every two, three months as they release patches on .NET MAUI. Gerald has a fantastic set of logs and videos as well. Yes. Um, where does the code entry go from here? Is there an app CS or something? Get to that in just a second. Um, is there a famous MAUI application out there in my knowledge? Um, there are, and I'm not allowed to talk about it. <laughs> Um, there are, and we're not allowed to talk about it. A big one that, it, that was made publicly available, there was a, a Dutch government application that was written with .NET MAUI that's out there. That was big news about a month and a half ago, two months ago. Um, folks were talking about that because it, it, folks had some kind of strange content in there, but there was a... Uh, uh, freedom of information filing asking for the source code to that application and the Dutch government made that available and you're able to see I, I forget exactly which which government office it was but that is a a known .NET MAUI app out there so Tim Corey did do a good video on the, the starting the entry points inside of .NET applications and how simplified works a little bit better. Maui lacks in good error messages and fixed suggestions. I agree, Robin. And those developer experiences are things that the team's heard and they're working on. Um, Hop in the Cloud is building production apps, even trying so far as succeeding using Maui to build a game. Very cool. Um, does Maui have the ability to use WMI items like framework? I don't think so, no. Hot Diggity Dog asks, can MAUI run alongside a native Windows application while it's being refactored to MAUI? Sure, absolutely, because there are two different memory spaces. So, yes, absolutely it can. So, right, and because .NET MAUI builds on the other things that we've been doing with .NET for a long time, if you've built your, your WinForms or WPF or even console application, 
in a way that you can refactor out your business logic into class libraries, you can reference and bring that class library into .NET MAUI and reuse all the same business logic. Then all you have to do is uh, put a user interface in front of it. BizCAD build a MAUI wrapper around a single page web app in about an hour. We're going to show that in just a second. Uh, the Xamarin version source code available kept the MAUI stuff private. Is that Was that how it was, President Anatra? I couldn't remember. That, that sounds right. Um, you've sped up the emulator drastically by enabling Windows hypervisor. Yep, yep, yep. What does MAUI do? MAUI helps you build native applications for Windows, Mac OS, iOS, and Android. Yeah, you have to do some stuff to get to native capabilities, and I'm not going not going into that. I want to stay higher level here, getting getting the base level stuff. Yeah, there's the GitHub repo for that Dutch app. Um, it, it is a read-only um, a read-only repository, and the Dutch Open Government Act disclosed. Uh, it doesn't. It's written in Dutch here. What it is. Um, but that is available out there. So thank you, Ocular Malice, for sharing that. Um, and uh, there we go. It's it's a bit of spaghetti code, to be sure. This is what happens, though, when whenever we judge somebody else's source code, right? Oh, look, that code is so ugly. That code could be written by the most eloquent speaker, the, the most amazing developer in the world, and folks will pick and have problems with it. Oh, you abstracted this away too much. I would have done it much simpler with XYZ. Every developer is a critic of every other developer's code, even their own. <laughs> so here, right, that app XAML. Let's talk about app XAML. And there it's referring and telling you there's the colors and styles for the entire app that are being merged and made available for you. And when we look under the covers, there is a code behind for this. And it inherits from an application, initializes the components of that application, and starts up a main page that is the app shell. What's the app shell? The app shell is over here. And this is a way for you to get some of the common navigations and capabilities inside of your application that we typically want when when we're building that forms over data type of application right you you want some kind of interaction with with menus and tabs maybe a drawer that slides out from the site you can configure all of that from inside the shell here but by default we're going to have one page here and we're going to load from main page and the route the location we're going to go to because shell sets up routing is main page XAML and there's the how main page gets loaded so that's how we step through and get to the main page um forms over data basically known as every application that makes any amount of money true think about it twitter is just forms over data facebook forms over data it's data being repeated again and again and again in a form right next to it so that you can create posts on Facebook. Forms over data. Reddit. Uh, you're posting a link and there's data being presented. So, um, can you... Twitter was making money. <laughs> um, all right. Folks mentioned building a, a simple application and getting it deployed into the store just with HTML. There is another way that you can build a MAUI app, and that's with a MAUI Blazor app. Let's take a look at what this is real quick. So, yep, we'll create a new solution, MAUI app 4. I'm going to choose .NET 7 again. And this is going to create an app that is able to reach in and serve Blazor content. So for me as a web developer, I'm right at home here. This makes sense to me. When I run this application, I'm not even going to look at how this thing is structured yet. It feels and looks just like the Blazor demos that we get by default inside of 
inside of our applications. So let's let this run. It's going to start up and we're going to see it looks just like the initial Blazor templates with that goofy faux weather forecast. And I've got a counter here that increments. And when I look in my project, I have a pages folder. I love the pages folder. As a web developer, that's Razor content. Boom. I'm, I'm sold. I know how to do this. Fetch data with a little bit of C-sharp code in here. Razor formatting. Like... An event handler on initialized async? As a Blazor developer, I know how to do that. With a forecast service? It's injecting that forecast service here? Oh, baby, I know how to do that. Okay, sure. So, there's, in, right, there's forecast service sitting right here. That's a standard C-sharp class that's returning content. And a forecast object that's a model that I'm used to seeing. As a Blazor developer, this makes perfect sense to me. How's it get in here, though? So that it's a mobile app. We start in Maui program. Create a Maui app, create the builder, use Maui app, inject some fonts. Stop the press right there. We're going to add the Maui Blazor web view. We're going to add the ability for it to render Blazor content. It's not rendering um, with WebAssembly. It's going to be rendering and delivering as though the web server was running in memory with our application. Okay? Th th think of this more like Blazor server side, but without the server. All right? the HTML content that's output from that is going to be displayed in a web view. Notice I didn't say in a browser, but in a web view. Talk about that in a second. We've got some developer tools that are lit up and there's, there's dependency injection. We're going to make that weather forecast service available from our Maui application to anything that requests it. Let's dig in a little bit further. So notice there is no app shell in this one. So we have app XAML up here and it's got a resource dictionary. We don't have all the styles and colors hanging out here. They're all embedded right here because we're handing off more of that processing to the Blazor application. So some of the things that we're using for buttons and labels that are going to appear are sitting right here inside this resource dictionary. But underneath this now, the main page we're starting up with, we're just saying, give me a new main page application, uh, which is right here. And now it gets interesting. A Blazor WebView component. So this is a, a, a browser component that's going to be made available that is wrapped and knows how to interact with that Blazor runtime. It has a host page that's sitting here on disk inside a dub dub root folder and it knows how to handle all of this by default because we 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 turned on right we turned on maui blazer web view it knows how to handle this we have here's the root component that we're going to use inside the blazer application to launch everything we're going to reach into the app object here and we're going to wire it up with from this main page all right inside index html it's an html page but there's that app id that's what it's going to replace with the content that we build makes sense so we end up with this browser component this web view that's displaying and showing our blazer application now let's pull that back a little bit. It's not attached directly to Chrome or Edge or Safari. It's attached to a web view. That's important. Think about Electron applications that are being built and deployed and delivered on Windows, Mac OS, uh, 
even to a certain extent Android and iOS. They they build, they work, they compile and deliver and work nicely on those environments, but they have the the Chrome runtime bundled in, a specific version of it. If something happens and the Chromium team, right, the, the runtime is called Chromium, if the Chromium team recognizes, ooh, there's an issue here, or hey, there's a feature we want to update and deploy, they patch that, and folks who are running Chromium-based browsers, like Edge and Chrome, they automatically get the update delivered and, and their browsers have that new feature. When you have a Chromium-based application, they can't push that update into it. This is the solution the Maui team has. They're wrapping whatever the native browser is on the platform that your application is deployed to. So think about it. When this application gets deployed and runs on Windows, it's going to wrap the Edge browser because Edge is the native browser on that. So this means when the Edge browser is updated on Windows, your application gets that patch as well. Same thing for iOS and Mac OS with Safari. On Android with Chrome, your Android device gets a Chrome update. Your Maui application will use a web view that targets and uses that browser appropriately. Very, very good to ensure that you don't inadvertently create a security hole inside your user's operating system because you're deploying an old, unsupported, or insecure version of the browser. Let me catch up on, on chat over here. I see a bunch of folks commenting. Can we create custom components and make them reusable? Asks, uh, is it Harry and Wolf? Yes, and some of our sponsors have done exactly that. Folks at Progress and Sync Fusion and Dev Express have all done this, and they've got great component libraries that you can check out and use. And we're gonna we're, we're gonna pause in a, in a bit here uh, for. I'm gonna take a bio break, get some water, and and we'll have a video from some of those folks coming up. Um. Yeah, component model, um, and, and, and between Maui and Blazor are two different things, and crossing back and forth is a little tricky, but you can do it. We are going to be using MVVM today. Does this run on mobile is a question out there. Yes, it does. So I'm going to choose my Android emulator here, and I will start the Android emulator there. This will take a few seconds to start up and get running. Um, but there it is off screen. And we'll see this startup. You see it got the emulator running in the output. You can watch it compile there. Let me catch up on some more questions here. Took you quite a while to get your social network app listed. Haven't had any issues. Fantastic. Um, yep, iOS and Android. Can you do Maui with a JavaScript app like React? Yes. So not only do we have, there's a dub dub root here. Nothing says that that index HTML has to contain, must contain Blazor content. You can certainly drop in all your JavaScript needs, all of your React framework, Vue, Angular, whatever it is. In fact, our friend Alyssa Nykal on the Code It Live channel, she works for Progress Software. She's She's got a number of blog posts and content demos she's given where she's built and delivered Angular apps that work inside .NET MAUI. Really cool stuff. So Blazor in MAUI is like not knowing a web app, but also implementing an app for each device. Kind of, yes. Right? As a web developer, I, I, I can take my Blazor content, copy it in here, or even reference it from a class library, from a component library, and it will load up and be available here inside the app. Now, after this app is built the first time, it won't go through quite as long a compile process. But there you go, it's starting. And we're going to see in just a second here that Blazor app running inside Android. So it does work. It's a different form factor. 
and we've got everything that was in the Blazor app resized appropriately. And fortunately, the template uses Bootstrap, so it does scale and, and appear appropriately here. No need to go hit a server to go load all this content. This can be running completely offline to present that information. Can we use the operating system theme in Maui Blazor? Um, yes, there is a way to do that. Um, I don't know it off the top of my head. It's one of those things that you can drop in. Um, I was going to get it added for the styles module and I didn't quite get their final stack. Um, I will take that as a note to make sure I get in for the styles module. Uh, use the OS theme. Um, I'll make sure that that note gets added. There's, I do have another workshop where that information is available and, and um, can be used. We can reference that and bring that in here. Pretty cool stuff for, for Blazor developers. Total, not just Blazor developers, web developers. There's millions of JavaScript developers out there that can now build and do this. They're not limited to React Native. Bring whatever framework, even vanilla JavaScript in, and you can do this now. Yeah, finite singularity is here too. You see a dub dub root. <coughs> so the styling inside the browser is with CSS. Yes. Right there. Right? So um do, 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 status bar safe area. Uh for WebKit. Um where is where is the header? I was going to look for and change the color of the header. The error UI. Ba, 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 ba. Right? When we look at index HTML, not wrong one. It's not even that one. It's in the layout. Down here. Right. Um, yeah, top row. There should be a top row somewhere here. Ah, oh, come on now. <clears throat> That's why, because it's top dash row. Um, in, ah, uh, they put it in the isolated. So there it is. Background color, right? And I could change that to, uh, let's change it to fire brick. Get rid of that hash. Now, it doesn't automatically reload here. So, when you do these types of updates, you need to, um, you do need to restart. So, that rebuild, say, skipping analyzers, and it's going to crank through and deploy a bit faster. Still slow, but a bit faster. You've heard iOS may not require browsers to use their Safari engine soon. Um, will that change which browser Maui uses on iOS? Don't know. Um, it, it, too many hypotheticals there. I can't answer. Um, how you doing there, OP? You've been watching the stream with no audio. Love to see enabling Bluetooth on Windows as a stretch goal. Um, I don't have that as part of this, but I will take as a note for additional content in the future. Enable Bluetooth. I... No. Um, uh, in the application. So it's still deploying. There it is. And we should get that, that brick header now showing up. Um, really? I'm still getting the, the gradient. Oh, that's the sidebar. That's why. And and it changed. It, yeah. Here. Change you. Fire brick. It, it's yeah. Hot reload isn't going to get that. So we got to re-hit it. 
reboot it. Um, .NET MAUI is much more than that, yes. Much, much more than those. There you go. Now it's got right. And I'm doing the updates in CSS, so you can work with that. Hey there, lanky Scottish nerd. Welcome. In order to show the content properly in the web view, the Blazor app has to be responsive. Um, I, I think I think all of our applications should be responsive, especially when we're targeting multiple device sizes, browser sizes. Don't forget, right? I mean, even if you are working on Windows or Mac or Linux, folks can always do this with your application. It's, it's not just that's the only way that you can view it in the browser. By enabling that type of support and adaptive rendering, responsive rendering, not only does it support folks when they say, well, I want to look at this side by side, and they shrink it down, but it also supports it in the, brow in the mobile devices as well. You're running a cold fusion database app in a Maui web view. That's crazy. Yeah, the scoped CSS. Thank you, uh, Harleek. Did I start with a .NET Maui app or .NET Maui Blazor app? I started with .NET Maui app. We're going to be doing .NET Maui app later. Responsive design is essential when developing, not just a Maui Blazor. Like I said, any kind of any kind of web app, you should be considering responsive design. So. I was just literally just a demo to show that we can convert that. Three developers can't seem to get a background color or an image to take work on a full page. Uh, where all the white is on your screen. I need a little more detail there, Robin. Um, okay. We've gone through, we've seen a little bit about how you can use Blazor with .NET MAUI. We've seen how you can build and deploy and run on at least the Android emulator here. Um, our friend uh, Sinclairinator there was pointing out, <clears throat> you should be able to get, if you have Windows subsystem for Android, you should be able to get the Windows subsystem for Android to appear here. Um, and be able to work with that. You want to be able to make the background a different color? So, the, <clears throat> this is inside the... <coughs> excuse me. This is inside the Blazor, um, Blazor layout. So, if I want to take div class page right there. Uh, background color, uh, blue. I'm going to push this over to Windows because I know it'll rebuild faster. And we'll be able to see it a little bit quicker. So. There you go. So. And that's on the, the page up there. And when we're working inside XAML, there's other places that we can set that as well. Okay. It's been a little bit... It, that is one beautiful application, right? <laughs> it doesn't work for you? Um, sorry? It, that bit right there, yeah. I mean, clearly it worked for me here on mine. I... Um, with the yellow glasses, it looks beautiful. <laughs> um, yes, the the gunner glasses make everything look wonderful. Um, my my eye doctor particularly said to me, Jeff, your eyes, you're having problems. You're, I, I, I'm at the age where I need bifocals now, and you stare at a computer a lot during the day. We need to protect you from the blue light. We need to do things to make sure that you can handle this better. I've been a big fan of, of gunner glasses for a long time. I am an ambassador for them. Um, and uh, I have I have a number of pairs of glasses. There's a coupon code below if you're interested in checking out a pair yourself. Um, full disclosure, I do, I do get a little bit of, of uh, support from them. 
for for folks purchasing. So, but I've I've found much success with using these. Maui will not run on your Visual Studio 2019. That's right, it will not. You need Visual Studio 2022. Um, but you you can run and build and work at the command line. It's a little bit different, but you can do that. What about the creation of dynamic UI objects? Is it faster in the Blazor Maui app? I think so. I think so. You are still using the browser to render it, though. So be aware. But I, I find the dynamic interactions in Blazor, for the way that I think of building applications, I find it to be much more compelling to work with. The, some of the ways that you do conditional configuration and binding with XAML, in my mind, are, are confusing and, and a runaround that we shouldn't really need to go through. So, um, we are at a good point here. We're about two hours and 15 minutes in. We are at a good point for, for us to pause. Let's, let, let's get a, get a beverage, um, take a bio break. I've, I've got a little bit of water here. I'm going to be, um, it, grab something to eat. Um, gosh, there were a group of folks from from the Iron Software that are hosting a, a pizza party that are watching as well. Hope you're having a fantastic day out there in evening. Um, it is. It, Corey, great to see you. Corey Weathers, one of our friends from the Live Coder stream team. Um, doing all the, the Okta things over there. How are you? Um, let's, let's take a little bit of a break. And um, let's... It, Gosh, the folks from 